Well, this morning I had issues with trying to pour underneath my bar. I kept hitting and didn't have enough clearance. So I've moved everything to the edge and now I can go high, low as I want and not have to worry about tipping. I also need to find something to hold this a little steadier because it doesn't really sit well. I mean, it sits there, but any little jaunt and it's going to do that and I'll have coffee everywhere. So I guess I should have bought the ring with it, but didn't see it when I purchased it on the Canadian site, Rogue Wave. I'll have to go back there and look as well as maybe Amazon has one that will fit. Just have to know what size. Taking suggestions of colors, if anybody wants to text me a link, <laughs> you can see the colors I've got going here for my pour over. Cleaned out my drawer. I need to get a few more cupping spoons and cups. I've got one spoon and one cup, so always start somewhere, right? I've got my collection of scales going. I use this one on my flare, which I need to get back out again. I want to do some coffee with that. And then this was one of the first ones I bought. It's an okay scale, but it's called E-Tech City. It works pretty good. Um, it's just on off. Let's see here. You can get grams, milliliters, ounces, and pounds, but it was a little big for my coffee maker, but maybe for pour over it'll work fine. It's got the tear, and it's pretty sensitive, I would think. Of course, right now, the battery must be maxed out. There it goes. So yeah, any little bit. That's milliliters, ounces. There, teared it out. So let's weigh something. Uh, let's put the lily dripper on there. One ounce. And it's pretty fast. So I liked it. I mean, I can still use it probably, but I got poisoned and started looking at other things. Let me turn that off. I went with the Time War Black Mirror. I like it too. I like that you can use the charging cable. It's uh, UPC. I don't know if you can see it there. And it stays charged for a while. Let's see here. And then there's an automatic mode as well. If you want to use that on pour over. Um, I've gotten a little confused trying to stir, depending on the pour over that I'm doing, and or picking up the uh, carfe or whatever. It whacks it out on me, and I always forget. But uh, let's see here. I guess we can measure or weigh the mellow drip and see how fast it goes. Pretty responsive. So I've been enjoying that one mainly for my setup for my espresso over there at the other bar. So to turn it off, you just hold it down and it just all disappears, it goes black again. So that's the main one that I use right now for pour over and espresso lately. Sometimes it comes in handy to have two scales, depends on what you're doing. This was the in-between one that I bought off Amazon. It's got a blue light, I'm not crazy about it, but it also can weigh different uh, modes. We've got grams, milliliters, ounces, and pounds, as well as this one has a timer. I think my very first one, the silver one, the E-Tech e City, did not have a timer on it. So how responsive is this guy? So let's see, we're teared out. If you can see, 
This is the one I had problems with when I would put things on it. It would change on me. See, like, after I set it down, it would be a amount, and then it would change a couple points. But it's okay. I mean, it works for pour over. It'll probably be fine. This one is battery operated, and it's not heat resistant or anything like that. Um, whereas with the Time More, it's not, I wouldn't say waterproof. I like that the pad comes with it. If anything spills, you can easily clean it off. Um, the bottom is much more protected. There's no battery issues there since you're charging it. The only thing is, once in a while, you accidentally push the button and it comes on. So that's kind of my scale collection. <laughs> but like I said, I use the time more mostly for my pour over. I'm loving the stag kettle. I do like the gooseneck. Um, I haven't really tried any other uh, gooseneck besides St. Anthony's, but it's not an electric kettle. It's just heat water and pour it in it. So if I'm going somewhere, I usually, oops, I usually take this to the dock with me in the summer. See, there goes that. See, I gotta be real careful. I do not wanna break that because it is ceramic. <laughs> but uh, this is good if you out camping or need something to heat water in over a flame. If I ever do beach coffee, which probably sounds silly, but I've never taken it to the beach. I've only had it at the dock where we have our boat. Um, this scale here, I like it as well. I've used it a couple times on the flare. Fits right under the tray. And it has a time mode as well, which is great. And the size is perfect. So let's do the lily on that one. It's pretty responsive as well. And it's same, weighing the same as the other scale. So I think it's a pretty good scale when it comes to pour over. And I like that it's got a plastic cover, easy travel. It is battery operated, but uh, I'm liking it. Need to use it more. <laughs> I can only drink so much coffee though. Um, other things I have that I enjoy very much is the uh, St. Anthony's Millwright hand grinder. Um, first couple times I used it, it uh, it was really hard to grind, and it took me, you know, over a minute. But now I'm down to 30 to 40 seconds to grind my beans. I uh, love the mechanism underneath. You have lots of choices of grind size, so I can go. I'm at a, like a 30 right now when I do my pour overs, and it seems well. I, I have to experiment a little bit more with that, just to see what kind of taste difference I get with the different grind sizes. Another gadget I'm enjoying is the Ember Mug. It's charging right now. Um, it's usually what I pour my coffee into in the morning if I'm busy doing stuff and don't want to drink it quickly. I get an hour and a half out of that cup usually. I've actually even taken it into the car. It does not have a lid with it so by the time I drink it down a little, I'm comfortable taking it into the car. It's all, you can get your app and go ahead and connect it, Bluetooth, and it controls what temperatures, I think it goes all the way up to 145 degrees. I usually drink mine around 138 to 140. I think the only downside to this probably would be, especially with espresso, and milk base, when you pour it in there to heat it, you get a film on the top of your coffee after, if you don't drink it within 30 minutes or so, I notice a form, a film forms at the top, which is okay, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> uh, other things I have up here, the flower dripper, Kefec, I've used it a couple times. This is the Bodum pour over. I got a carfe back there. Um, 
I purchased this used from Mike, great guy. I've gotten to know over the coffee community. Um, he was selling it, so he let me buy it and he threw in some great things with it. The tamper didn't come with it, so he threw in this tamper as well as the, I guess it's like a distribution tool. I don't want it to fall, stay put. <laughs> I can get it without knocking anything over. Um, I think he said he ordered it from someone in Singapore, if I'm not mistaken. Not Thomas. <laughs> but Thomas has been doing some great things with this wood. Uh, just very, very poisoning items. So, and then I've got the fellow, uh, I forget what these are called. They're cups by fellow. So I bought two of those. And like I said, the St. Anthony's is here. And then I got the uh, Bodum, um, what do they call this? I always forget. Oh, gee, just went out of my head. Okay. I'm having a mind, not just blank. Anyway, <laughs> I forget what they call this type of coffee. <laughs> not percolated. Uh, <laughs> Now you're yelling at the screen, right? Screen. <laughs> Something press. I just can't think of it right now. Anyway, that's one of the other things I have. I've used it a couple times. Not too many. My favorite is an immersion type coffee. I and the pour overs. I'm learning to get a better, stronger taste with those. And the mocha pot. Um, that was fun learning how to use that. I've used it several times on the stove actually which is interesting it takes a little longer than i am used to but i do appreciate mike also he just he sent me that so that was very generous of him and we'll use that maybe with some of those new coffees that i've been trying i'm gonna have to try them in the mocha pot and see what they taste like i might be surprised <laughs> and then i have a coffee gator back here for cold coffee Another dripper. This one is just a V60, but it's ceramic and white. And then, of course, you can probably see my latest fun in coffee has been Onyx. I've just been loving trying all the different ones that they have, and there's still so many more I haven't tried. I've got the Power Nap, the Power Nap which is a half calf back there, an Ethiopian. Costa Rica, my newest, I just bought the other day, and I froze it because I can't enjoy it right now. Slow drinker of coffee. Southern weather, my husband really liked that. It was more of a chocolatey. The Monarch is just a basic milk base, if you like milk based coffee. It goes great with that. This one was really good. It's one of my favorites I'm thinking right now. I haven't tried uh, all of them though. And surprisingly, the decaf, I don't know if you watch Hoon Coffee or not on YouTube, but he had a bracket challenge this last week over Thanksgiving where he was trying a bunch of different coffees. And this was an emergency one that I sent him, a decaf Columbia. And if you go to his YouTube to watch it, it's just great. It's, uh, he didn't know it was decaf. And when he found out, he said he was really surprised because most decafs give you the kind of a funny taste after you drink it. I did not find that with this one. Um, if you didn't tell somebody it wasn't decaf, they probably wouldn't know <laughs> because it's that good. I don't know if you can read the tasting notes. He got the notes pretty, pretty close too. Um, right plantain, panella, I'm not sure what that is. Tart apple and milk or dark chocolate. So that was fun. Uh, the Kenya is a pretty good one too. They're all really good. I've just enjoyed pasting and testing. It's just been fun to to do that. And then, oh, I've actually bought the Monarch twice since I have uh, a sweet tooth. I like my milk-based <laughs> dark chocolate, red wine, dried berries, and thickened syrupy. I think that's why it's really good with milk. It just enhances that even more. So that's my pour over setup currently, where I keep most of that. Oh, and then of course I have the 
this is the Aeropress Go. So that's my setup when I usually go in the summertime to the boat dock. We take the Aeropress for a quick coffee because I don't like to spend too much time making coffee when we're enjoying the lake. <laughs> and this book is a really good book if you're into coffee art. I'm not real great at it. I've done a few things, but nothing like this book describes. But uh, Don Tamong is a... Uh, he has a YouTube, as, or a, no, I think it's a IG Instagram where he does his art sometimes and heard he had a book, so I had to buy it and I like to play around with it when there's time. <laughs> so that's my setup here and I'll take you over here real quick. Excuse the mess on Christmas decorating. I use the Breville Express. I am... Some of the parts are in the sink because I used it this morning, but uh, I'm enjoying just different things with this, especially lately the full pre-infusion shots really help not make a mess. And I have only been using the bottomless portafilter. Everybody says I should try and go back to a spouted. <laughs> I just haven't been able to do it. I just... I want to see what my shot looks like when I'm pulling a shot every time I do it. So that's why I do that. And the uh, full print fusion, since the pressure goes way up to 14, pretty much, when you let go of the button, if you hold it down constantly during the whole shot, it comes out nice and clean. No splattering for me. And the needle only goes maybe 9 or 10 at max. Sometimes not even nine, but uh, that's why I do it, because it just keeps and soaks the puck really nice. It comes out really clean with these Normcore puck screens. Just be careful on how much coffee you put in your portafilter, because if you overfill it and try to put this in over top, you could scratch the uh, screen on the machine, and that's what I hear is not a good thing. <laughs> so this black thing is actually the cover to my DF64. Shout out to Espresso Outlet, Joe, for getting this one for me. Uh, when they first started to come out, he was very kind and I purchased it, of course, but he was able to get me one. And then a few mods, uh, Keeper, who also makes these great white holders that are stuck to the wall. Great job with the needle guide. Tells you where you're at on your size of grind. And then they, of course, hold your distribution tools, your tampers. And shout out to Thomas. Quite a few things from him. I appreciate it his work too. He also, I purchased uh, the shop mirror. It's magnetic, comes off the base. Sorry, I'm moving around so much, but if you want to keep it on the stand, you can, or the magnet also can go on to the machine, and you can see the bottom of your portafilter without bending over. Just a great little device. So. seeing a few 3D things. The cup is also one of Thomas's creations. He sent that to me. He knows my color. <laughs> uh, the tilt base for the DS64 is a free download on Thingiverse and if you have a 3D print or access to one. I think, I mean, I haven't had any issues with getting clogs or anything. I don't know if it's from the tilt or it is just the stainless steel burrs that are in this uh, grinder. I don't think it was aligned when I purchased it and I have not aligned it, but I, like I said, if I'm not having any issues with it, I'm not gonna mess with it. <laughs> um, CY, another coffee guy. Uh, Cafe Martella, I think is his YouTube as well as Instagram, but uh, 
that uh, thingy verse that he shared um, called a tilt collar or it just holds the cup. Um, the DS64 does come with a cup. I think I have it here somewhere. It's just, it's plastic. The collar will fit in that as well. I just, it's kind of large too. I'm not crazy about how large it is, but it's a good grinder. Um, it fits in there as well. And you can see the grounds so that if you want to see what grind size is coming out, it's probably nice for that, but that's something else that I don't use. I like my little metal cup for my single dosing. So that's that. Um, another handy tool. I need to print one. I actually purchased this one off of Amazon. These go on top of your Porta filter. Having a hard time thinking of names of things here, but it also can go right into the bevel and hold, and you don't have to hold it. Um, I don't use it in there because I don't use my grinder. <laughs> I did it first, but as I started learning more and getting into better grind sizes, and that's why I purchased this. Um, I also have the Smart Grinder Pro, which is the same burrs as the Express has. I use that one mainly for cold brews, the Smart Grinder Pro. Um, it um, does a great job for large amounts of coffee and that's what I've been using for that. So basically this one does the job for all my coffee drinks. Unless I'm doing pour over I'll use my hand grinder which I don't mind because like I said it only takes 30 to 40 seconds to grind a dose for that so anyway back to this it's great for having that on there and using your WDT wise distribution tool this is another thingy verse but this one's from John Kim and he shared that on there so thanks to my son who gave me okay, can't get that back on there. <laughs> Here we go. It can't see. That's what the problem is. Anyway, my son gave me his one of his first 3D printers, and he's been sharing and showing me how to use it. So I've done a few things. I've done these. The base took forever, but second or third try later, I was able to get that together. Even after cracking it. I'm not going to tell you where the crack is, but we glued it and it works fine. <laughs> and then great thing about this base is I can hide all my cords underneath and inside of it so they're not all on the counter everywhere. So that and the 3D collar here, or the cup, cup collar. I could probably have printed one of these, but that was before I got into 3D, so I went ahead and got it from Barrett from Porta Keeper. And the holders are great. I could probably use more, but I'm running out of space. I don't want to over clutter eyes, which sometimes can happen. Um, I have to mention Dylan, of course. Great guy. Does great woodwork. Great coffee maker. <laughs> he's, in, he's into coffee as well, so he's made me a few of his items that he sells. He also does towels. I haven't gotten those yet, thinking about it. <laughs> Money always has stops you, but uh, hopefully soon I can get some of those with my logo on them. He also makes a bean cellar. Um, put your beans in there. i got to refill. I've only got one left in here. But uh, I just kind of, my mind, I forget what's in them sometimes, so I have to write down which coffees are in which. Because three of them are for my husband, three of them are for me. Uh, sometimes I put decaf in these and sometimes regular. It just depends on how much we're drinking. So this is a great thing to have. I, I know they make some that have valves in them. I haven't thought about that when I first purchased this, but a three-day um, supply is probably perfect for me. Any more than that, you might want the valves just so that they don't lose a lot of 
freshness uh, since I don't I do single dose so the tamping mat the bean seller the collar he does shirts hats he can put anything on them he can put his logo if you have a logo he just he's great and when it comes to those kind of things and thought about doing that uh what else the um I'm trying to think the cups of course i got me into different kinds of cups um, i'm a collector of things so when it comes to coffee you can get into all kinds of things Porta Keeper sent me his little cups, so I just kind of have my art pens. Here's another 3D. This is great for the flare when I'm using the flare. It just kind of doesn't move the beans around a lot, so. All these little tools Thomas sent. My first WDT was really, the needles were really thick. I mean, they're still good for stirring and I still use it once in a while. Um, I had my husband put needles inside of some handles that he sent me, and then we made a spoon out of one. Great stirring spoon. And then, of course, the brush. Gotta have a brush. It comes in handy when I wipe off things, like even on the top here. Just kind of keep things clean. <laughs> got two of these. This is the smaller one. I do like to try my hand at drawing on art, so that's kind of the way I've started. I've got some of these. Um, right at first, I don't use it anymore. I do it by touch, but Thomas sent me some stickers, and as the milk goes in and heats up in your steamer, it uh, just gets to where you, you know how much, how hot it is. So it's a great starting point when you're learning how to steam milk. Tons of YouTubes out there. Dylan does a great job on it as well as Lance Hedrick. Uh, that's kind of how I got started <laughs> in steaming my, my milk and art. But that's kind of just a little tour of all my coffee stuff. I'm into tea as well. Won't even go there. That's one of the first things I was doing before coffee, but uh, we had coffee to get back to how I even got started into it back in 2017.